they're posting mainstream media. Whereas every single time mainstream media talks about uh, an Occupy event in their point of view, it's getting posted either by them or by Occupy. Um, and the other piece of it is the news that's going unreported. And I think that this is one of the most important and powerful tools that's getting out of there, is every time there's police brutalities, people's cameras are up and they're videotaping. Every single time somebody's gonna get the billy club, it is on camera and it is on tape and it is on Twitter. You're not gonna be able to find it anywhere except for the Twitter. Um, one of the advantages, a lot of you probably use Facebook, most of you. Um, one of the advantages to Twitter over Facebook is that Facebook is a ton of information that doesn't make any difference as far as like family photos and conversation groups. Twitter is little bursts of information. They are people's reasons for occupying. That might be a quick little tweet that somebody puts out, they lost their insurance, whatever it is. Pictures, video, and news. All in a single stream that you customize. So one of the issues that people have is, oh, Twitter's overwhelming. You can follow just the Occupy Syracuse and just the Occupy New York City and get a pretty comprehensive look at what's happening around the country. Um, so Maya and I have been tweeting on the Occupy Syracuse. I don't know if anybody else is. Yeah, there's another guy. Okay. So there's three people here in Syracuse, and what we will do is post information from these meetings. The minutes are going up. Um, when there's events, that's going up. But we're also retweeting. Retweeting is sharing somebody else's post. Denver says, I just got cracked in the head, and here's the video. We retweet it so you can see on the ground what's happening. So into the nuts and bolts of how you put together a feed. I'm going to assume that you all decided that you want to do it. I'm not here to convince you about too much better than Eric has. Um, there's two essential functions on a Twitter user. The at symbol and the hashtag. The at symbol is what goes in front of your handle, which is your Twitter name. Um, the Occupy Syracuse is Occupy underscore Syracuse. At symbol, Occupy underscore Syracuse. You can also search it just like you search any other function in anywhere else. You can just search Occupy Syracuse and it'll pop up under the feet on the side. So with an at symbol, you are following a single person or organization's feet. So one of the great things that's come out is people are tweeting live at the General Assemblies in their cities. Um, New York being the, the best example because they actually have journalists on the ground. Mother Jones, um, in these times, their journalists are going to General Assembly and tweeting real time the, what they're going over. So I've been following those t uh, Twitter feeds every night. I'll follow a single journalist and I'll follow his tweets through the day. And what we're seeing is how strategy is being played out in New York what decisions they're making as far as pushing the movement forward. They are also at times asking people to tweet at them. How would you like to see this movement move forward? So you can actually tweet your opinion to the occupiers in New York City to weigh in on General Assembly items, um, committee items, things like that. So you can now send them your information in real time. Um, and in their community, they are uh, actually at, po at moments broadcasting. So they'll say, we're calling for tweets. Why did you join the Occupy? You tweeted at them, and they broadcast it on the side of a building so everybody there can see. I was just going to say, because you think that like, the whole ad symbol thing is overwhelming, you're kind of confusing. If you go online, like on your computer to do this, instead of using your smartphone, if you have one, um, it, they make it really easy for you. You click the reply button on any tweet, and within seconds, like, be replying, they set it up for you, you just type what you want to say, and it sends it out. Yeah, you're not typing in these at symbols. Uh, they, like, like she said, you hit the reply, it, it auto-generates it. If there's more than one uh, handle that is being used in there, they will both be auto-generated. You can choose to reply to one or the other. Um, but for some people that that's too much, you can just follow. You don't have to tweet it. Um, you can just get information back to see how it's happening to make it an easier process. If, you're, if you feel like it's overwhelming, just use it to get your news. Just get information out. Um, it is also, now the other half of that is you can't tweet at me. You can't tweet at us at Occupy Syracuse. You can ask questions. What time's the General Assembly happening today? We'll respond to it. There's enough people that are on it that we've been pretty good about getting back, back to people quickly. Um, the other, and so you can tweet at any of the occupies around the country. There was a rumor in Denver the other day that an eight-year-old had been maced. Um, so this is the one downside to Twitter. It, rumors explode. So follow through a thread. If somebody just posts eight-year-old maced, 
search for it. See if anybody else is posting. If there's nothing else there, it's probably a rumor. So this happened the other night. I tweeted at the person who originally posted it that said, can you confirm that this actually happened before I share this to the world and get everybody all excited and up in arms and pissed at the police? Did this actually happen? They didn't respond. I didn't retweet. Um, so you do have to follow through the thread. Don't react as if everything is truth, but you can get a lot of truth out of it. Make sure you know the source. If you see a video, it happened. You saw it happen. Um, one of the videos that I was watching during the time, there was two really shocking videos that I saw on Twitter that I did not see elsewhere during the, the Times Square march. One was a legal observer run over by a police, a police officer on a scooter. They were run over, they parked on top of it, and, and off, the cop jumped off and ran away. The, an illegal observer kicked the scooter off of him, at which point four more officers jumped and started hitting him with billy clubs. If you read the article in the New York Post, it said a protester was arrested for kicking the scooter. Now the reality of it, that you would have only found on Twitter, is that he was run over and brutalized by the police. That information is not going to be coming out through mainstream media. You're not going to find it on the New, on the New York Times website. You're really only going to find that posted by occupiers to the Twitter feed. Look at our list of followers at Occupy Syracuse. We have about 300 people that we're following and 300 people that are following us. That's a great place to get started. And like I said, if Twitter is, just feels like too much for you, follow us, follow New York City, and then you can move on from there. You don't have to get too much information. You have a, a, a moderated and managed news feed. Um, so now there's people engaging in conversation every day. Is this the appropriate move, next step for the movement? So you can have general conversation, OWS, Occupy Syracuse. You can have niche conversation if that's something you want to do. They were like, you know, I can't believe that you're down there. You're just not trying hard. You know, you're occupying because you're too lazy to find a job. And then starts a, a hashtag feed or a, a conversation between the two people where they're like, actually, I can't find a job. I have three master's degrees. And, and they start to have a genuine conversation. People are really connecting on Twitter. I know it sounds crazy, but I have absolutely met more people through Twitter than I have through Facebook or you know, going to the bars or anything like that. I meet people from Twitter all the time in real life. Um, they are actual people. Yes, please. Can you um, talk about... And could you, could you give me your name? Sorry, I'm Emily. Hi. <laughs> Who uh, Twitter is owned by and any yeah. possible censorship? Uh, there has been some uh, mentions of censorship from major occupies around the country. New York City and Chicago both come to mind. As Chicago mentioned today that some of their tweets were being um, censored or edited. Twitter is partially owned by J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, it is a tool that we are using against them to uh, start this revolution. And, and part of the context I told you I was going to mention, in Egypt, it was the single most powerful tool that they had to organize nations. In Libya, they were using it. In Spain, they've been using it. In Iceland. These movements have started around Twitter. It is owned by J.P. Morgan Chase. So be it. I, I, you know, we're not going to be able to step away completely from all of these publicly owned entities, but we can absolutely use the tools that they are providing to us. Um, but yeah, it is owned by J.P. Morgan Chase. Thank you. And it is being censored a little bit um, so far. And in other countries, it was shut down because essentially the government shut down. The, you know. And we have to also remember that they are blinded by their insatiable appetite for profit. So they will only censor us so much because they want us to keep using it because they're making money from us using it. And it goes back to like what you were saying before about, oh, you're tweeting from an iPhone. We don't really have many other options other than relying on corporations to do this kind of stuff. So there is a, some semblance of reliance we have to have. We just can't, we just have to be able to adapt if the option disappears. I'm sure we will because we're very... And there is, the, the, the next option, and I'll get to you in just a second, is uh, they are now using in New York a social networking app called Vibe. So for those of you who are, are on smartphones, it is a phone-to-phone -phone networking. I don't think it really applies to us here yet, and this is kind of the 2.0 for folks that are just getting into it. Um, but should this happen, please look to Vibe. The guy who, who did Vibe is actually an occupier, um, and it is a completely anonymous social networking with time limits. Um, so that is something you want to keep in mind. When you tweet, it is out in the world. It is a completely searchable, no, pr I mean, you can set up a private account, but most everything that's on there is public to everyone. Um, that is a big difference between Facebook, where Facebook you can privatize everything, um, so your pictures are private and all that. With, with tweets, it's really about getting information out there. 
So people aren't really holding that back because they're trying to get as much out of it. Sorry, stop. How do they make money from Twitter? Uh, I think that they, they do. Oh, thank you. Um, they have, okay, another thing about hashtags is they have this thing called trending topics on the side of your Twitter, you'll see it. It's the most commonly used tags throughout the day, um, and they update it in real time. So if, like, when Michael Jackson died, I remember, like, a couple years ago on Twitter, like, it exploded in, like, ten minutes, like, not even. It was, like, the number one trending topic for, like, weeks and, like, months, um, because everybody was talking about it. So, like, ideally, like, OWS would become, like, a trending topic. That's, like, our ultimate, that would be, like, an ultimate goal for, like, our Twitter capacity. Um, but sometimes what Twitter does is they'll have like a featured trending topic at the top and it's one that's sponsored um, by a company. So like if there's like a new movie coming out, um, sometimes like the tagline for the movie will be like a trending topic. And granted like not everyone's tweeting it, but um, it's being like the advertisers are paying Twitter. So I'm guessing that's one way how to make it. And the trending topics are on the side. Nobody notifies you. It's just like a little column on the side. It probably won't apply. The, the trending topic is where a lot of people are concerned that there's some censorship because we weren't trending. Um, and then we finally, today, Occupy Wall Street showed, or the OWS tag showed as a trend on Twitter. Um, and there are also some companies, and I don't understand how this works, that follow the trends on their own, and I don't know how they have access, but there were, um, it was reported the other day, and I don't know how verifiable it is, that uh, OWS had the highest action or the most usage of any hashtag ever for a single day on the, the day that they took Times Square. Um, so this really is a powerful tool and maybe the most powerful tool that we have at our disposal right now.